Hello guys, good evening. Today we are going to discuss about a new topic called SDN, Software Defined Networking. The main intended audience for this video would be the persons who knows the basics of networking, especially routing and switching. So SDN, it is known as Software Defined networking so uh, before we dive into software defined networking we should know about vms virtual machines so let's discuss about the basic use case of a virtual machine uh, let's say you have a pc In other terms, let's say you have a hardware. Let's consider you have enough amount of hardware, such as like you have motherboard and the storage and memory, you have plenty, okay? Now, um, so what you will do is, if you want to operate this PC, you should install an operating system. Let's say you are installing Windows 7. After some time, you got a got into a situation where you need to install Linux. What you need, what basically we will do is we will just partition the hard disk and we will install Linux. Now, if you want to switch between the Windows 7 and Linux machine, we need to reboot the PC and during the boot menu, you will choose either Windows 7 or Linux. So this is the normal basic scenario which every one of us might have uh, came across in the past. For a home user, this is fine. But when it comes to the industries, uh, they will be having a storage area network and they have ample of storage and they want to use multiple operating system concurrently because there are a lot of use cases. And let's say they want to use Windows 7 and Linux. And let's say they want to install one more operating system. Let's say Kali Linux. They want to use these machines concurrently. So at the time, the normal type of installing operating system that will not suit. So there comes an operating system called as hypervisor. So instead of installing an operating system directly on the hardware, first what we will do is, let's say this is our hardware. On top of the hardware, we will install the hypervisor. So, if you ask me what is meant by hypervisor, this is nothing but this is a server operating system. So, on top of a hardware, we are installing the hypervisor, and on top of the hypervisor, we will install the operating systems. Let's say this is our Windows 7, this is our Linux machine, and this is our Kali Linux. The main aim of using this hypervisor is to run the normal operating systems on top of it. Concurrently, we can run all the three machines at the same time. Simultaneously, let's say you open a web browser and on one tab, you can see the Windows machine. On the another tab, you can see the Linux machine. And on the another tab, you can see the Kali machine. Now, you, you can ask me, can't we install these operating systems directly on a CPU if I have uh, enough storage and memory? Yes, you can. But let, let's consider you need to install 50 operating systems in a use case. In such kind of scenarios, uh, this is not a good solution. But we need to use a hypervisor to manage the virtual machines individually and simultaneously at the same time. The purpose of hypervisor this hypervisor will allow you to manage these machines in an effective way. Okay. And uh, you guys can ask me a question like, what is the difference between the Windows 7, which we install on a normal PC? And what is the difference between the Windows 7, which we install on top of the hypervisor? See, the core concept remains same. Uh, the things, 
when you open the windows 7 all the programs and everything the functionalities everything remains same but the underlying concept changes in the windows which we install on the normal pc the underlying concept it consists of the it, it need to contact to the it need to directly contact to the hardware but whereas here that is not the case now the basic functionality of these windows are same but the underlying concept is different this windows operating system will directly interact with this hardware whereas this windows operating system interacts with the hardware through a hypervisor and the machines in other words the operating systems which we install on top of the hypervisor are considered to be virtual machines so this picture denotes a vm this picture denotes a pc a normal hardware pc this is a virtual machine now let's say i hope you guys got a uh, what is meant by virtual machine in simple terms inside a single hardware we are running multiple instances of operating system and each operating system is considered as the virtual machine all right now let's come into the introduction of sdn now let's say here you have a server server 1 and here you have server 2 and let's say here you have vm1 and here you have vm2 and here you have vm3 and here you have vm4 in a normal scenario let's say we want if you want to make the communication between two different PCs, what we will do? You will be having a switch and this is your PC1 and this is your PC2. Now let's say these two PCs are on the same network, then when the PC sends a ping, it goes to the switch and switch sends it back to the PC2. Same thing applies here in the SDN as well. Let's say here you have a switch and the server 1 will be having a hardware port that connects to the switch and server 2 has a hardware port that is connected to the switch. Now if the VM1 wants to communicate to VM3, the packet goes to the switch and comes to the server and reaches the VM3. This is the normal scenario. Here we have two VMs. Okay. Now, I want to reach VM2. So again the packet going to switch and it will come back to the VM2. So now this increases the time and this is not the efficient design. So what they have did is, this is the normal PC and this is a virtual machine. Similarly this is the normal switch and they have created something called as virtual switch. So we will be having virtual ports connected to the virtual switch. If in case we need to make the switching between the server, here for example I have taken only 2 VMs. Let's say you have 100 VMs inside the server. You no need to send the traffic to the switch. Instead of that the V switch will take care of the switching part. When it comes to the routing, if you want to make the communication between uh, two different subnets let's say here you have switches and here you have a PC and here you have a PC and this is your router so the communication from this PC it goes to the router and router sends it here but here let's say the VM1 and VM2 are in two different networks you can have a virtual router inside the server here also you can have a virtual router inside the server in simpler terms, the east-west communication, switching or routing is taken care inside the physical server itself. Only if these VMs needs to reach out to the internet, the north-south traffic, that goes out to the physical machine. Let's come back to our definition. 
what is SDN? We know that router and switching functionalities. See, for a pictorial representation, I'm using this diagram. But in a real time, the router and switch looks similar, whereas the router has only like minimum ports, whereas which will be having the entire hardware ports. But uh, I hope you guys have heard about uh, layer three switches, which is capable of doing switching as well as routing. Okay. What makes this device to do the routing? That is the software which is inside that. Same thing applies for the switches as well. And there are some different hardwares also there, but let's stick to the software part. Now what we are going to do is, we are going to put the routing and switching into a software and we are going to install that software inside the server. So the software is going to take care of your control plane. Instead of using a hardware router and a hardware switch, inside the server we are going to use software defined networking for switching and routing. Yeah, that's it for the day and this is kind of a, just a brief introduction and in the upcoming videos uh, we are going to take one of the proprietary software which is called as VMware NSXT and in the market we have a lot of SDN solutions available one is VMware NSXT another one is Cisco ACI and I think we have uh, Citrix also has a solution. Uh, first, we'll begin with VMware NSXT. We will see the use cases and how this NSXT works and how this NSXT, this is a software which is installed in a server and this software is going to take care of the routing and switching part. Uh, please comment your questions. Uh, feel free to raise your questions. We are here to help you. Thank you.